All right, so today I want to introduce you to the mahogany ball python. And I would say the mahogany is one of the more interesting morphs in the ball python industry today. It's one of the few morphs where I've actually seen the demand increase and the supply kind of dry up a little bit and the prices are actually increasing significantly over a few years ago. And if you look back in some of the old YouTube videos, people are you know trying to figure out what this gene is, the mahogany, and they're trying to breed it through their collections, seeing really what the potential is and here we are five or six years later and we can see some of the combos that people have made and let me tell you it's <laughs> some of the stuff is mind-blowing mixing with the mahogany and I would say for a dark morph it's kind of hard because a lot of times when you mix a dark morph with other genes it kind of muddies the water and you don't get really impressive results and let me tell you I would say as far as a dark morph in ball pythons this is probably the number one dark morph that I've ever seen mixing with some amazing combos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you over to the internet and I want to show you the amazing potential of the mahogany. All right, so I'm going to start over here on the world of ball pythons and this is what a mahogany looks like. And at first glance you might think, hey, that looks kind of like a dark normal, pretty much like a normal wild type classic ball python. But if you look really close, you can actually see it has a lot of gold color all through the snake, pretty much from head to toe, almost like, almost like a copper color. And the really interesting thing is you start mixing it with combos and that copper color really comes out and shines in a lot of the combos. If you actually breed two mahoganies together, you get a super mahogany called a Suma. And take a look at this crazy snake. That is one of the wildest snakes I have ever seen. It's pretty much a jet black snake with this copper color right down the top of the snake. That is really impressive. And as a matter of fact, a lot of times when you make the Suma, you don't always have the copper line going right down the back of the snake. I went over to Morph Market and I pulled this one up and take a look at this. This is a super mahogany female. That is really stunning. Just a really jet black snake. And the interesting thing is the prices on these are really super high. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at this, this actually sold for $2,000. That's pretty incredible. I'd say I actually looked over there and these are selling I'd say probably right now on average about $1,500 for a male or a female. And I think a lot of that price is coming from something that has been done with the Suma. I got to show you this. This is pretty incredible. This is the Suma Pied which was just recently produced a couple years ago by Justin Kobelka. Essentially what he's trying to do, he's trying to reproduce the the panda pie and if you remember back when I did the video about the panda pie that is actually the super black pastel with the pied mixed in and the problem with the super black pastel is it tends to have some deformities around the mouth some duck billing and stuff like that and the, the whole idea of the suma pied was all right we can make panda pines with the with the mahogany the super mahogany and we'll pretty much eliminate all of the duck billing so there's no as far as we know there's no genetic defects at all with the suma and it's it's i'd say this is pretty close to the panda pie if you look really close you can see it's not quite as jet black as the panda pied. It's pretty close. I'd say this is a visually impressive snake, but I'd say it falls just a little short. I'm thinking you could probably mix something else in here with this. Maybe some cinnamon or another dark morph to really in intensify the black on this. But I just wanted to show you the difference between this and the real panda pie. Take a look at this. This is this is probably one of the most impressive snakes. It almost looks like it has ink spots. It is a super jet black uh, little little patches over here. This is the panda pie that essentially we're trying to reproduce with the suma instead of the super black pastel. And I'd say you know you don't always get the kinking or, or the the duck bill on the front of the mouth with the super black pastel, but sometimes you do, and I think a lot of people shy away from the project. And that is why everyone's going over as soon as they produce the the suma pie. People are like, all right, mahogany, that is the gene we need. We want to make the same thing, you know, and then essentially make a black and white pied with none of the duck billing effect. 
So another thing that is kind of interesting about mahogany is it works well with almost every single gene. As a matter of fact, if you if you mix it in with some of the visually dominant genes like coral glow or stuff like that, you can actually see it breaking through some of the visually dominant. And then over here, I pulled up this picture. This is the bamboo mahogany, and you can't even hardly tell that mahogany is in the mix. And I'd say it works pretty much well with everything across the board except for bamboo, which is really kind of a unique anomaly. You know, I'm really into the bamboos. So I thought it was kind of interesting that, you know, the snake around my shoulder at the beginning and end of every video, that is Bobby. He is a bamboo ball python. And I think just the straight bamboos with nothing else in the mix is probably one of the most visually impressive bamboos. And I just thought it was interesting that you mix in mahogany and you pretty much get almost no effect. So here is the leopard. I'd say the leopard is really common in the ball python industry. It's pretty much the king of combos. It's a co-dominant morph, so you can breed it across your collection, get visual leopards the first time around. You don't have to wait for hets and then breed the hets back to get a visual. And this is this is probably one of the most dramatic combos. You mix the leopard with the mahogany and take a look at this thing. This is, <laughs> that is probably one of the best dark morphs that I've ever seen just between two genes the leopard and the mahogany. You get these really bright highlights and then the really dark that really highlights, it kind of outlines all of it. I'd say that's probably one of the best leopard combos that I've seen, the leopard mahogany. Here's the cinnamon. The cinnamon's kind of interesting too because it almost looks like a normal wild type ball python, a little bit darker. And the interesting thing with cinnamon is you mix it with a lot of morphs and you get a lot of usually streaking on the sides. It's another dark morph, so it really enhances it. And this is what happens when you mix the cinnamon with the mahogany. You get a really impressive snake. Almost seems like the sides are really just kind of wiped out all along the sides. And down by the belly, it's totally clear. And if you look Look really close at the very top. You can almost see a tiny little line coming right down the top of the snake. That is a pretty impressive snake. So the pastel, I'd say the pastel is really popular in the ball python industry. Pretty much everyone breeds with pastel, and, and essentially pastel is a yellow snake. Sometimes it can be bright yellow, sometimes it can be muddied out a little bit, depending on the line of pastel. You mix pastel with mahogany, and you get a really, I think this is a really visually impressive snake. It almost looks almost looks like a goldish coppery metallic kind of a look to it it's really interesting how it mixes with the pastel and the dark almost highlights all the patterns all around the snake I, th I think this is probably one of the best pastel mahogany mixes that i've seen with the pastel it's pretty impressive especially with a dark morph it's impressive so the mahogany also works extremely well with the lessers. I have some lessers in my collection. And even just the standalone lesser as a juvenile, I actually have some adults. My female, one of my females, 100% head ghost. I think she's a little bit brighter. Well, I was actually sold, it was actually sold to me as possible head ghost, but I'm pretty sure just with one copy of the recessive ghost usually really enhances the brightness of a lesser, which is kind of interesting. Lesser is in the the blue-eyed leucistic complex. You breed two lessers together and you get a completely white snake with blue eyes. Pretty awesome morph. And this is what happens when you mix the lesser with the mahogany. Take a look at this. That is a really impressive snake like I've never seen before. It has some really intense highlights coming right down the top. Kind of wipes out the sides. Really makes for a really visually stunning snake. Here's the spider, and I would say there's a lot of people that shy away from spider from the head wobble. But the interesting thing is you can actually breed blackhead to spider and eliminate the head wobble. The problem is, is when you breed blackhead to spider, a lot of times you'll get a spider that doesn't really look like a spider anymore. And almost the same thing happens here with the mahogany. And I haven't actually heard anything about the, the mahogany eliminating the wobble in the spider, but if you look at this visually, this almost looks exactly like a blackhead spider. So I'm thinking maybe it almost works the same as the blackhead spider where the mahogany kind of totally will eliminate the wobble in a spider. I don't know if that's true, but it'd be interesting to see if that's actually the case. 
Here's the pinstripe, and I'd say the pinstripe is pretty visually dominant when it comes to combining with different morphs. Pretty hard to actually break through the pinstripe, and it actually works really well with the mahogany. The cool thing about the pinstripe is that it usually has a stripe right down the back, the sides are pretty clear, and then it has these little tiny pinstripes coming down kind of the sides of the snake. It's pretty cool. This is what happens when you mix the pinstripe with the mahogany. There's definitely a huge effect on the snake. You can tell it's all broke up and the sides are really kind of granulated and it's, it's almost like all the the patterns kind of bunched up together and completely changed into this kind of like a granulated. The sides are no longer clear with the pinstripe. It's kind of an interesting combo mixing the mahogany and the pinstripe. So the albino is a recessive morph. It's, it's essentially what it does is it changes the color of the snake to a white and yellow snake. It always has red eyes. This is what happens when you mix albino with mahogany. It's quite an impressive combination. You definitely see some changes in the pattern of the snake as well as some kind of like extra color bleeding through and it's it really increases the contrast. So I thought that was a really interesting combo. Here's the pied, of course, this is, this is kind of working backwards from the Suma pied. If you mix in the mahogany with just the pied, one copy of the mahogany gene, this is what you get. You get the mahogany pied. You actually breed two of these together and you can get the super mahogany pied. So it's a, it's a recessive and a super in one snake. And I thought the, the, the curious thing about this is it's, you look at the splotches on the pied. This is the first time I've actually ever seen this where every single splotch is a slightly different color than the other ones. It almost seems like, it almost looks like, at first glance it kind of looks like a chimera to me where it's combining different genetic material of different snakes on top of each other. Every single mahogany pie that I've seen kind of has the same effect where every single spot is a slightly different color. I thought that was kind of an unusual effect. Here's the GHI. The GHI works really well with Mojave, a GHI Mojave. And don't, don't, don't confuse Mojave with mahogany. <laughs> it's, a pretty, this is the, it's really close when you're talking about the two, but let me tell you, they work completely different when you're breeding them. So if you mix the GHI with the mahogany, this is actually what you get. This is a really impressive combo. As a matter of fact, it was kind of unexpected that the mahogany would bring out that much yellow and really give that much contrast in a snake. It's, it almost like pixelates the sides too, which I think was kind of interesting. It almost looks like there's granite or something in the mix. So the black pastel is probably another really strong, probably one of the best combos when you mix it with mahogany, the, the black pastel. As a matter of fact, this is, this is the black pastel from the panda pied. You mix two of these together, you get almost a black snake. You mix it into pied, you get the panda pied. But this is where it is pretty much the, the merging between the two, where you mix the black pastel and the mahogany together. And take a look at this. This is pretty impressive. This is the mahogany black pastel, really a striking snake for being really dark. It almost looks like a little, <laughs> like a like a cinnamon muffin or something. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how that looks. It's a really impressive snake. This is the clown. The clown is a recessive gene. I'd say the clown is probably the king of combos when it comes to recessive genes. Works really well with a lot of stuff. And I would say the mahogany is probably the king when it comes to dark morphs. And it's, it's I'd, I'd say probably the, the king of codoms is probably the leopard. Those are probably the three best genes that work pretty much well with almost everything. You mix clown with mahogany and you get quite a visual impact you can definitely see that the, the mahogany is bringing out a lot of the, almost like the gold coppery color of the clown. It's interesting how it has all these little, this kind of like blushing down the top. It's almost like a gold, like a coppery blushing 
right down the top of the snake. It's pretty interesting. As a matter of fact, this was for sale and it's <laughs> it actually sold for a pretty incredible price. Just the mahogany in with the clown sold for $5,000 just last year. It is pretty amazing how the mahogany stuff is really increasing in prices. I was actually looking back at some of the older stuff and it seemed like it was a little bit cheaper until the last couple of years and it seems like all the prices are really getting really high as people are jumping onto the mahogany bandwagon. Here's the banana, and you know the banana is, it's a co-dominant, and you mix it, you breed it to, you can actually breed it through your collection. 50% of the babies will come out bananas or banana combos. Banana's kind of interesting because you have male makers and female makers. So depending on the genetics of the snake, all the offspring of the banana that are bananas can either be all males or all females. I actually have a coral glow in my collection that is pretty much the same thing as a banana, and it's, it's a male maker and every single offspring that I had that was a coral glow was always a male. I produced dozens of them. Everyone's a male. Kind of an interesting phenomenon with the banana and the coral glows. And they're really visually dominant snakes. So you mix it with just about everything and you can definitely tell bananas in the mix. And here's what happens when you mix it with the mahogany. I thought this was a really interesting combo. Pretty much unlike anything I've ever seen. It almost gives like a, almost like a purplish hue to the banana, which is kind of almost unexpected. The mahogany banana. Here's the Mojave, and I'd say the Mojave is another one up there with lesser, works really well with mahogany. So you have a Mojave mahogany, <laughs> which is kind of a tongue twister to say, but it works really well together. Take a look at this combo. This is the mahogany Mojave. <laughs> oh, it sounds kind of uh, tribal or something. And I actually went one step further and added pastel on top of this. I think the pastel mahogany Mojave is one of the best combos. This is going to blow you anyway, check this out this is a pretty amazing snake doesn't even look real it is so bright and intense and essentially when you're working with the dark morphs what you're really shooting for is a really dark snake with really bright fluorescent highlights coming out makes a really you know interesting contrast between the highs and the lows and it's, it's definitely a visually stunning snake to say the least uh, chocolate, I haven't really talked a lot about chocolate. I actually don't know a lot of people working with chocolate. It's an interesting morph. It's a really dark morph. So in this case, you're actually mixing the chocolate with the mahogany. Both are really dark morphs. And this is what happens when you mix the two together. And I thought this was really a visually appealing dark morph. If you're into the dark morphs, it doesn't really have the highlights. I'm thinking maybe if you added some pastel on top of this, you could really make those highlights really pop out. But I thought it was a really nice looking dark snake the chocolate mahogany so from here I just kind of wanted to throw out some of the pretty much the far out the wild mahogany combos that I've seen over on morph market that I've seen like nothing else on in the whole ball python industry I've never seen anything like this this is actually the mahogany black pastel Het Red Exanthic. I haven't really talked much about Het Red Exanthic, but it's, I just I just thought this was almost like an unbelievable snake that I've never seen before. That is something else. And if you look at the prices on some of this, this is actually this sold for fifteen hundred dollars. This is actually just recently sold, May of 2019th, which is pretty incredible. That is an amazing snake. Here's another one. I've never in my life have I ever seen a snake like this. As a matter of fact, it, it, sold, it sold for, I think, a really super low price. As a matter of fact, if I would have had this snake, I probably would have named it the Dalmatian and I would have set up a booth at the NARBC and had little stuffed Dalmatians all around, kind of like, like the Stormtrooper. I've never seen any snake that looked anything like this. It's pretty incredible. And it'd be pretty tough to hit because it has a lot of genes. This is the Black Pewter Mahogany Spider Yellow Belly and what it actually is is it actually has five genes in the mix it has pastel black pastel 
Mahogany, yellow belly, and spider. That is a snake like I've never seen before. Actually sold for $750. <laughs> I probably would have marked it up to maybe about $10,000 or so and kind of made a big deal about it. But anyway, that was like the, one of the most, I, I would say that is definitely a one of a kind unique snake, unlike any snake I have never ever seen before. So I thought this was really an interesting combo. This is actually the Suma with the albino. So it's a super and a recessive. I thought it was really striking how the two work together. Having the, the since you remember, the Suma is the super mahogany, pretty much an all black snake with the recessive albino on top. It's always kind of unexpected. Is it going to have red eyes or not? Is it going to be orange? Is it going to be black? You never really know. Is it going to be snow white? A lot of times you really don't know until you make them. And then you pop this thing out and it's like, that is one of the most impressive snakes that I've seen. As a matter of fact, this one is actually still for sale, $1,400, and it's a male. That would be a pretty powerful breeder. And speaking of breeding, <laughs> I was actually coming over here and kind of looking how much does it cost to get into this project. And these prices have actually come up. Usually for like a single gene mutation, you're looking at, you know, you know, especially for like lessers, pastels, Mojaves, stuff that's been around for a while, you're usually looking at anywhere from $80 to $150. These are actually upwards of $250 just getting a mahogany, which is pretty impressive. I actually came over here, looked at the most expensive mahogany het pie, just mahogany het pie. So you take a mahogany, bring it to your pie, and you're getting hets. And this sold, it's, it's for sale for $925. And then with shipping on top, that's close to a thousand just for a mahogany head pied, which is pretty amazing for a, for a snake like this. So I was actually going over here, all right, if, if I was actually invest in this project, which I'm really thinking about getting into the mahogany project, what would I actually buy? And take a look at this. This is a really unique snake. This is the Suma, so it is the super mahogany with pastel on top. Just one copy of pastel completely changes the all black snake to like a solid gold snake. I thought that was a really interesting effect, just mixing in pastel. And keep in mind, everything you breed to this will, this is actually, this is actually a male and this is pretty much the cheapest super mahogany that I could find over here at Morph Market. So they kind of caught my attention with the pastel and it would be a really powerful breeder because half would be mahogany, half would be mahogany pastel, which would be really awesome. And this one's actually selling for $890, a little over 900. If I wouldn't have actually spent my budget on buying snakes this year, I would have actually considered this. Maybe next year I will get into the mahogany project. So uh, besides getting into a super, doing something like this, I was thinking, what else could I do if I was to buy a snake for maybe a little less money, something really visually stunning that had mahogany in it? And this is what I decided on. I probably won't buy this here because I'm pretty much, uh, my, pretty much dried up my, I think I spent, I think I spent about $2,500 on new snakes this year. So that is pretty much my snake budget for the year. It'll definitely pay off next year because it's definitely an investment. But take a look at this. This is the mahogany. Mahogany Mojave Pastel. That is an amazing snake. And this is actually a female selling for $550. So pretty reasonable price. I actually don't have Mahogany or Mojave in my collection. So I'd be bringing in two new jeans. It would be a pretty powerful snake. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Jeff Jackson asks, have I ever had a respiratory infection in my rats? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I do breed rodents for my snakes. I have probably between two and 300 rats in my racks at any one time. I never had a respiratory infection, but I did have something go through. Luckily, I figured it out, but at the time I was frantic. I could not figure out what was going wrong with my rats. 
As a matter of fact, I was throwing out dead rats almost every single day. And let me tell you, if something goes through your collection like that, it can be absolutely devastating, not only financially, but it can be very emotional as well. So <laughs> what I was actually doing is I have these water systems that water my entire racks. I was running antibiotics through all the tubs trying to figure out what was going on. And I finally figured out it was the bedding. I was using a really cheap pine bedding. Now, believe it or not, pine is toxic to rats. And what you really need if you go to a pine bedding, you need a kiln dried, dust free pine bedding. That's the only thing you can really use. And if you're using the wrong kind of bedding, if, if you're breeding rats and you keep throwing out dead rats, I can almost guarantee probably one of the problems that it could be is that you have the incorrect bedding. And pretty much once, once I figured that out, I went to a whole bunch of different beddings. I went to a paper, shredded paper bedding. Works really good and it's free, but the problem is, is you're always chasing tubs all the time because it really doesn't absorb the moisture or the smells. And then I went over to a cypress mulch bedding, which was extremely expensive. And then I finally met this guy down in, in one of the pet stores down in Denver. And I started talking to him, telling him my frustration. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I use this pine bedding over at the store over here. That's what you need to use. And sure enough, for $7, I can get this huge compressed block of pine bedding. It's really cheap, really effective. And since I went to that, I never lost a rat. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.